and welcome. We're going to go ahead and start and I'll just continue to let people in um, as as they come. Um, I my name is Miria Gray. You can't see me. I am behind the other side of the camera. But today we are speaking with John Uecki, who is our senior vice president, right? Director of financial services. Dr uh, director of financial services um, at uh, our Chelsea. So it says Chelsea Groton Bank on the slides because they are the bank's slides, but it is really Chelsea Groton Financial Services um, that John works for, which is a separate silo of the bank. John? All right. Well, thank you very much. So today we're going to go through uh, selling or uh, succession planning for the life of a business. And what I would ask, uh, if possible, is that uh, you participate as much as you can, mm -hmm. uh, because obviously part of uh, learning and being actively involved uh, and learning from each other, I think, is, is really critical. And I, I've been doing this for a long time. So I've been in the business 30 years. And uh, I looked at this uh, outline a number of times, and I was amazed at how much information uh, is really, you know, conveyed within this course. So I think that's going to be incredibly helpful. And uh, I strongly recommend that you take notes. And if you have a question, please stop us and let us know. Mary is going to be keeping an eye on it. Uh, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, we get your input. So, uh, and joining me is Tito Go Gautier. Gautier. There you go. And uh, right. Tito is uh, from Infinex and he runs our insurance group. How are you, everyone? Mm. And uh, one of the things that we're handing out but we'll make available is a uh, evaluation worksheet. And uh, he'll, he'll spend some time talking about that a little later on. So the objectives of today, so we're gonna go through uh, succession planning and valuation of business. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, if, if you have some thoughts that you'd like to share, we'd appreciate your uh, participation. And so, we're going to talk about uh, change of ownership of business through selling it, uh, possibly closing it, or handing it to a successor. Uh, establish, and I, I think this is something that is, uh, I relate it more from an advisor standpoint. It's as an individual looks at their life and they look at retirement, a small business is a living entity to a certain degree. And it's something that I think everyone needs to take into account when they are in small business. I mean, they, they open, they close, some last multiple generations and uh, some, you know, last less than a year. Mm -hmm. And it's important that you're prepared to understand what's involved, uh, including succession uh, planning, uh, transfer of ownership, and obviously the taxes. So what do you want uh, and what do you not know? So are there, you know, any things that uh, you thought about in terms of? Yes, um, I'm a little bit of a specific business. Sure. Um, but the interesting thing about this kind of work is I own the intellectual property. Yes. So I own all the bunnies, I own all the, everybody. I own everything. Okay. Um, so it's kind of, I think part of my succession plan is if I'm no longer able to do this, these children's characters tend to live literally forever. Sure. I mean, good night, we went out in 1947. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. this is a real question for me. What, how, who, I, you know. Well, and, and you know, I think that brings up a very good point because what is highlighted uh, a little later on in this is uh, there's a certain point when you need to have professionals get involved. Okay. And, and that's attorneys, obviously, to I, review your documents of incorporation, LLC, that, you know, the beginning, the birth of a, a business, yep. but also uh, from a transition of any kind, because right. exactly the intellectual properties, and you think about it today with the digital aspect of yes. it, uh, it's interesting, I was talking to somebody recently, uh, a friend of mine has been in, uh, I guess it's like a, they run for law firms, a search engine for intellectual properties, mm. which I was thinking about, like, you know, he, his point to me is when you merge a company, when you look to do a campaign, it might infringe on something pre-existing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a exploding it's business. Terrible. Yeah. So, and, but that's why having, you know, accountants and attorneys with expertise in that, I think is absolutely important. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll just go here. Did I wait? All right, so we figured out what we want to learn. Was there any input from anybody? I don't have anybody. Some more people have joined, but we don't have any questions or comments yet. Okay, so so why would you sell a business? You know, and and from a professional perspective, you maybe somebody's going to offer you to do what you're doing, but for their company. Mm -hmm. So you have an offer. Uh, you might have somebody that uh, contacts you, and you know, yeah. they make you an offer. <laughs> That you can't refuse. Random house. Um, I'm calling yeah. Wednesday. I, I got it now. <laughs> you could also hit a point where you're like, you know, uh, the sales, the profits, they're not enough to meet your needs. Yes. And, and maybe somebody, it might complement what they're doing. Uh, there could be some value from that. And it could be that the market or industry changes. And, you know, I was thinking about it. Uh, I have four kids. And so it's, it always takes me back to the projects that we've had. But at one point in time, you had to have a blacksmith in a town for it to really be a town like you it just didn't exist but things changed and so you know there when we look at what's going on from a technology standpoint between ai and all these various things industries do change so i mean that's that's a possibility there there's other things to consider as well and that's you know personal considerations maybe you're ready to retire mm -hmm. you know and uh and that's something to take into account uh you could get burned out working for yourself and, like uh, <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I honestly, I can tell you that my experience has told me in the last two years, people are doing a gut check mm -hmm. and they're taking a look at what they've done with their time. And, and, you know, if they had a bucket list, they want to make sure that they do it. And I, I mean, I hate to say it, but our mortality was something that was front and center for everyone. Mm -hmm. And, and so you, you have these considerations, um, uh, could be uh, health or I'm in it right now. I have uh, a mother and a mother-in-law that uh, have uh, lost the ability to drive. And that's uh, mm -hmm. a life changer for me in ways I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So uh, you might have a desire to go in a new direction. So you were uh, like, I mean, from your perspective, yeah. Random House contacts you. Right. Right. Because the big thing of the things we're working on is distribution. And sure. Because the big, the big folks, they're in every bookstore. You know, they're in Walmart, they're in Target. But for us to get in there is so yeah. Um, that that would be a reason. Also, obviously, I just turned 70, so I started this at 70. Um, I don't know that this is my children's dream yeah. to take this on. Sure. Probably. Um, so there's that. Well, and I, you know, I I think that's something that uh, is definitely the case where uh, you have family businesses that people think of that they will groom a child mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. I think the reality is our children's generation has a different view That's of the world and it's difficult for us to relate to it in that way. You're right. And the value and the time and the effort, uh, you know, it's just like, uh, we're, and we're going to talk about when you close a business, you, you kind of have to get a gauge of what the tipping points are. Yeah. And that's really important. So, uh, so if you're looking to sell a business, we're going to talk about uh, the steps for that. So, is it saleable? Do you have strong profits? Uh, is it in an attractive industry? Uh, potential buyers. Uh, you know, you, you could probably come up with a short list of of buyers, and mm -hmm. then uh, do you have good assets? And, and you know, part of what you talked about, which I think is really uh, important is the value of those digital and intellectual assets yes and then the quality of inventory you know and, and uh, small businesses tend to have at times a, a greater amount of inventory because they don't have the distribution structure of a larger major corporation i remember i went to i think it was uh a factory it was a bmw i think yeah and uh it was amazing how little inventory they maintained because they're so large they could demand and get the supplies now we all know that was obviously more than uh, two years ago because uh, circuit boards and everything else have <coughs> changed that situation yes so uh you might want to transfer to another person it could be a family member it could be somebody that uh, is working there and then do you have a healthy balance sheet you know and, th and that's where uh, i talked about the fact that Having an accountant that's looking at your books, I, I think that's such a critical aspect of, of what you do. And so then 
what is your price? And so I'm going to let Tito talk about that because he has some resources. Hey, everyone. How are you? Um, so I did want to give John the most talking time here, but uh, I can definitely tell you that we have been seeing a lot more business owners coming to us just trying to understand what they should be doing for planning. And that's because, you know, the last couple of years, a lot of businesses have either been thriving, starting, or really struggling. And so best thing that we can do for you is come to you with strategies, come to you with what everybody else across the country is doing. And that's what I'm going to be here a little bit to share with you. What are some of the ways that we do our valuations? How can you go about doing it? And what's that going to look like for you guys at the end of the day? So one thing that I will start with is saying that just by your being here, I, kudos to you guys, because getting this, getting people to actually come here and have this conversation is half the battle. And as you can see by the slide, if I'm not blocking it, we have almost 60% of people who've never even had their business value out of all business owners. And if you take all the people who have, you can actually see that 56% haven't done it in the last two years. What's happened in the last two years? has gone through the ringer so whether your business has gotten that much better it's gotten a little bit worse the valuation has probably changed so it's good to do it every few years um you can see even some people are doing it from the last two to ten years but think back three years ago five years ago can you really say that you knew where you were going to be in this time a lot of things change a lot of things probably have so let's have that conversation what's changed in your life How's it affected your business? Yeah. Oh, Long button. There we go. Okay, so how is a business value? Typically, we're a, the one that everybody's familiar with, fair market value. Issue that we do see with that is that typically you don't know the fair market value until you're <laughs> about to sell. And so when it comes to planning, that makes it a little bit more difficult because we want to start this process a few years in advance. And so by doing that, how can you go about getting the fair market value? Well, there's a couple different ways. Um, there's a couple different valuations that we do look at. Tish, as you mentioned before, intellectual property, whether you're a service, you're a manufacturing industry, we're going we're gonna to look at the valuations all differently because of what your company has to offer specifically. So, let's see. Next slide. What are a couple things that are going to uh, influence your value overall? Oh, did it not go? I will get that mouse done eventually. So a couple things that are going to influence your value right here. Nature and history of your business. What type of business are you in right now? Outlook of the economy, financial condition of the business, your book value overall, uh, the earnings capacity from now and then moving forward in the future. Nature of any value, any intangible assets or business, such as goodwill, intellectual, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, any block of business, any side block of business that's going to be relevant value prior to any of the sales. And then lastly, market price of any stock, actively traded stock. If you're a big company, you do have actively traded stock, that's going to be incorporated as well. All right, so business valuation methods. We've got about five different ones that we look at. I mentioned fair market value before. A um, couple of the other ones that we do have, adjusted book value. What that is equates to is assets with adjustments minus liabilities generally represents what you would see for the liquidation value of your company and then we also use a couple of formulas so capitalization of earnings this method looks at the amount of capital that would have been invested to yield the current average net annual earnings of your business so method is going to be appropriate more for consulting type companies uh those with few or no tangible assets See, sounds like somebody's might have a question. No, okay. Um, second, or separately from that, multiple of uh, discretionary earnings. So companies in which goodwill of the owners has significant impact. Those results are going to be incorporated using a multiplier. Adjusted book value is added to this number. So again, depending on how, what your company is structured as, depending on what your main focus is, there's going to be a couple different ways that we're going to be able to get the best value for you at least to show you what your best value is. Um, another one, excess of earnings method, combination of adjusted book value, capitalization of earnings method, um, discounted future cash flow method, and lastly, comparables and market value. So again, something where this method is, who else is doing this in the field? So as, you were, as we were, again, going back to you, Tish, mm -hmm. 
you talk about other people in the field, some of those other deals that have been going on. I mean, one that kind of sticks out for me, someone I read as a kid, Roald Dahl, yes. his entire catalog was purchased. That's right. Significant amount. I mean, mm -hmm. great stories, but you see that's the type of thing that they would look at is saying, okay, what are similar companies to yours, to your structure, your history? Right. What are they doing mm -hmm. right now? Okay. All right. So no question. <laughs> All right. So where can you get your business value? Big question for a lot of people. Um, first one that a lot of people come to mind is actual firms, business appraisal firms that will do this for you. The only thing is, depending on where you're at, you're just starting out, you might be a couple of years in, you just don't want to spend the money on it. You'd be looking at about $8,000, $10,000 or more, depending on the size of your company. So wow. that's not something that even I would want to do. But if we can just come to you and say, look, like we said, you need to understand the valuation of your company. It's going to help you down the road. It's going to help you today to start planning. We can do it for you with, you're not here in person to be able to get these, but we're going to pass these out afterwards. Just this fill in sheet that you can do right now gives us an idea as how your company is structured. And from there, combination of this, a couple of your tax documents, we can get this informal valuation done at no cost to you. And so, we'll send those out in an email after this. We'll scan it in for yes, you guys. Absolutely. So nice thing. You fill this out. You get us the tax returns that we'll need for it for your business. And that looks like the last three years of your tax returns or three years of um, your cash and balance statements. From that, it takes us about 10 business days. And we'll get you a full business valuation in terms of the best ways to look at the business that's valued at. I'm getting a little ahead of myself there, but couple other where areas where people look at um, brokers or investment banks, definitely an, an area where they can, but it can definitely get a little convoluted. So we see more of more large, almost actively traded companies that typically go that route. CPAs, financial professionals, it's a great place to start. I think a lot of people do start there because they're just not sure where else to start. One thing I will tell you is when we're working this process, we involve all of them. We're going to involve your attorney. We're going to involve your CPA. In my experience, the best way to do it, we're all working on one team. We're, we're not working separately to fight against each other. We're on your team. And so we want to get financial consultant, your CPA, your attorney. We all want to work together, come up with this plan for you. I just got on the first time. Okay, so a couple different ways that you can just influence your value as you might be considering, hey, you know, five, ten years, I think I'm going to start seeing my way out. I need to start planning a little bit more aggressively and actively. Focus on increasing cash flow. As you can imagine, more cash in the balance sheets. It's going to look a lot better when they're doing evaluation. Develop operating systems that are going to improve the sustainability of those cash flows. Document sustainability of earnings. Improve the facilities of parents. Pretty much put yourself in the buyer's shoes. What are they going to look at when they see your business for the first time? Both the books, physical, what your employee structure looks like, your culture. What are they going to look like? What would you look at? What would you give yourself as a rating for your company? And then that's an idea of what you used to say. Maybe I need to shore up on this. Are there any legal issues? Any owners that are still trying to, uh, you know, get their piece of the pie, but they're actually not part of the company anymore? That's something that tie that up, tie that off. Then we can start having those conversations with prospective buyers. Let's see. Okay, so I went through the couple different valuation methods that we uh, that we use a little bit earlier. As I said, they do work a little bit differently depending on the type of industry that you're in. What I can say is that they give you a full when you complete this page, do the tax returns, the valuation itself. It's about thirty pages, mm -hmm. so it, it does cover a lot. There's a lot of specific charts that are designed based on the tax returns that you give. So it's very customized to you. So it's nice in that aspect. And again, it's not going to cost you $10,000. So it does give you the best thing to do because as we said, fair market value, you get to establish that a little bit when you're closer to making the sale. But in terms of protecting your business, setting up that succession plan, key person, labor market's tight these days. We want to figure out if you guys have those key employees that you're trying to retain, Let's talk about setting them up with an executive bonus plan, something along those lines where we can have those discussions instead of giving them equity in the company, instead of moving them one way or another, 
let's give them money through life insurance. Um, Will business valuations help them with insurance? Like, yes. So that you can get the correct insurance? Yes, that's a very good question. So um, the case that we actually placed last summer, two business owners, HVAC company, um, they had thought their business was valued. They did it back in 2016. It was valued at about 7 million at that time. They thought, hey, you know what? It's probably gone up to around 10. They both had, as the brothers of the owners, they both had $3 million term policies to protect just in case one of them died, the other one would be able to buy out the other spouse. No problems there. So as we were going about the strategy with them, we said a couple things. One, let's do your informal valuation. Let's see how much you're actually worth today. Well, lo and behold, where they thought there were only 10, they were actually closer to 13 million. So what does that mean? We need more life insurance for you. Secondly, from there, as we're going through everything, we actually look at their buy-sell agreement, which again, should be reviewed every few years. They still had a third owner on their policy. So from 2016, when he was actually bought out, he was still on that policy. And if they didn't do anything about it, he was going to, he would have had a legal claim to the company. So just by having that conversation, we were able to say, look, <laughs> got to fix your buy sell. If not, then you're going to have some trouble when one of you passes down the road. And separately from that, we were actually able to get them a better rate on their life insurance because he was healthier today, believe it or not, than when he was seven years ago when we took it out. So that's a good example. And thank you for bringing that up. Uh, as far as what we're seeing, what people are missing right now, just because they don't know where to start. So are you a candidate? Many of the companies that we use, like I said, industrial, service industry, um, really anywhere, farming industry. I know this isn't really the right side of the country for it, but that's definitely something that we can uh, offer as well. And the same thing, it's let's figure out, let's start establishing where your business is. What was the last time you did planning? What was the last time you did have a value? Do you even have a buy sell? Don't feel bad if you don't, because a lot of people don't. But those are the questions that you should be asking yourself as you're starting to try to do some planning. And this is the chart that I actually like, I think it speaks volumes and what it does. So here are a couple of the different ways, as you can see, adjusted book value, capitalization of earnings, excess of earnings, discounted future cash flow, multiple discretionary earnings. These are all formulated based on your, <coughs> excuse me. These are all formulated based on the paperwork that we submit to principal. And with that, we're going to say your valuation is the best one on the board. So you're not subjected to just saying, oh, I only have to do the adjusted book value instead of million. Nope. Your business for all intents and purposes is at $3.6 million. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, that's where we start looking and saying, who is the owners? Who are the prospective six succession owners? And let's start figuring out a way that they can buy out the company when the time is appropriate. Retirement, death, or disability. And let's see, I believe it's the last slide here. Factors. And just a couple things to think about as you're going about this. As you're, as you're doing your planning, and in my experience, a lot of business planning leads to your own personal estate planning. What are your heirs going to be taxed on? Are they going to be involved in as part of your succession planning? How does that, how does that look in the personal planning that you're doing? What does your buy-sell agreement say about this? Again, as I said, that owner being left in there, that's a bad situation. But if your owner said, or if your buy-sell agreement says your business is only valued at $6 million, and then you go and try and sell it, or if somebody retires, dies, or has a disability, there's going to be a lot of issues there can't really rely on handshakes these days as much as we used to. So having it in paper is going to be the best, best thing for you. And I would say key employee, extremely important these days. I mean, labor market is tight. We want to retain these key employees. So having them, by being able to keep them on by way of offering them an executive bonus or some type of life insurance that they'll be able to take over. It's a good out of the box idea of thinking, hey, I can bonus you can still be tax deductible too. So it's a good way to look at saving some of those employees and holding on to them. Um, I believe that is the last slide here. Yeah. Okay. Negotiating the deal. So you've come up with uh, 
the perspective uh, value. So you had that. And, and, you know, one thing I would mention that if you're considering what to do, it's probably a good place to start is to get the informal business valuation and do that prior to going to an attorney, an accountant, because the first thing they're going to ask you is what is your business worth? Mm -hmm. And so I think that is, you know, it's kind of a gut check to a certain degree because now you have a disinterested third party that's using an analysis to assess what it is. And so when you go and present them with that, I think it's great because it gives them the understanding that this is serious and that you've taken the time to really look into it. So it's mm -hmm. a, an important thing to do. I would almost liken it to uh, being pre-approved for, uh, yeah. pre mm -hmm. for a mortgage. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, you don't want to go in searching for things if you don't know what you're actual approved for. Especially if it's kind of unique to a certain degree. Yeah. You know, I was just about to say, I'm a union. Yes, and and so and that, that's one of the employees. <laughs> but see, that's also a, a very important point when you look at it because maybe when somebody is looking to buy it, how is it that they're going to bridge you yeah. and your asset level yeah. to the future of it? So in in some cases, it's you know to put together uh, you know succession or part of the business transfer mm -hmm. is, is your staying on in a consulting fash. Mm -hmm. So, you know, part of what you want to look at when somebody is interested in your business is, are they a qualified individual? You know, do they have the ability to meet what you set as the price? Uh, are they doing a lump sum? Doing a lump sum so, you know, one of the things that was uh, talked about a meeting earlier today is, uh, in southeastern Connecticut, we've had a large number of people that uh, have come in from metropolitan areas to buy homes. Mm -hmm. And they're not buying them through traditional finance means, they're buying them. With and so you, you see a number of those type of things. And uh, in most cases, especially in an intellectual case, they're going to want a pretty serious non-compete clause. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's, you know, it could be geographical, it could be that you have a business that has the traffic, those kind of things, and they don't want you opening up across the street. Right. So, hmm. uh, management assistance, you know, looks like a great business, uh, sounds like a great business, but we probably need some help to make sure that we have our ducks in a row when we take it over. Uh, and then, you know, do they have the down payment? You know, that's also... Uh, you know, a consideration from the standpoint, are they serious in terms of their interest? Uh, what kind of collateral might they have? So, I mean, when you look at the challenges of selling a business, uh, it, it's, it really depends on the business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some businesses have had, you know, it's uh, you know, multiples of gross earnings. It could be all those things, but they're established industries. Yeah. And in some cases it is, you know, what are the actual assets, the equipment, those type of things. So it's really, you know, getting to that. But I think it's also making that decision when you own the business, it's, you know, it's, it's your career, it's your life. Uh, it's not, an, yeah, it, it, it's, it's not an easy decision. So one of the things, and this isn't a pleasant part of the discussion, but it's a very real part of the discussion. And I think certainly in the last two years, this has been a gut check that people have had to take into account. And that is, you know, closing a business. And, uh, and when you do that, it's not just all of a sudden you just decide to stop showing up to work one day. You know, there's many aspects of it that you have to uh, be aware of because, and, you know, depending upon the structure of it, whoops, uh, you need to take a look at the founding documents. And, and in many cases, it's going to show you what you need to do. Uh, you would have to sell the assets of the company, uh, cancel permits, licenses, lease agreements. If you're renting space, uh, if you had insurance on that space, you'd want to cancel the policy. Uh, it, it's uh, a number of things that when you kind of go through the list, and that's what we're going to do, uh, is we have the ability to help you walk through that process and outline these steps that you want to take. Uh, comply with uh, federal income tax laws. Resolve outstanding issues, customers, creditors. Uh, you know, right now you could have materials that you paid for, or mm -hmm. there could be people waiting for your goods and they're literally sitting on your shop floor and you don't know when the parts are coming to complete it. So all those kind of things. And then absolutely maintain records because 
you might have taxes that are due. Uh, how do you know what your capital gains loss or, uh, you know, when, when you assess from that perspective, you need to have those records. And that's what we talked about before was this is a good thing to have the business valuation when you're sitting with attorneys and accountants. On a more pleasant note, planning for succession. And uh, you're either looking for somebody to come in and own or run your business after you retire. Mm -hmm. and, and it could be a family member. Mm -hmm. It could be somebody in your company that has the passion. And uh, there's many benefits uh, to having a successor come in and uh, assist you within that process. It also allows you to really map out the next steps that you're going to take. One of the things that you want to do is you do want to start early. Mm -hmm. I, I talked about it early on about it. It's almost like when you start a business, you need to think about how will I exit this business? And, and I think most people don't think that. They think, mm -hmm. can I survive the first six months? Can I survive the first year? And then they get going. But the reason why you want to start early is because if you have it structured properly, it's going to make it easier for you later on. So if, if you have, you know, enough uh, staff or members of the company, you might identify somebody who you feel has the, the drive and the interest to continue on. You should also be prepared by training somebody to be a successor. Uh, I think that's a big part of any business is making sure that if something does happen to you, does it have the ability to continue on? And that, that really can impact the value of it. What is the tax exposure? Uh, you know, very often when you look at family distributed businesses, uh, you run into complex tax issues, mm -hmm. you know, from generation to generation, generation skipping. Uh, there's a lot of complications. And I think it's highlighted from an industry of, you know, farms is, uh, you know, has been a big challenge uh, for many families in terms of that. But there's definitely nuances within there that if you plan ahead, you don't wait until I'm ready to exit, but if you plan ahead and you start those discussions, it mm -hmm. makes it a lot easier mm -hmm. to take advantage of what strategies you could have put in place. And, and that's why having uh, legal advice is absolutely important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. And this kind of help is what you guys provide. Help yeah, we, we're going to help you with the coordination from the standpoint of we have an outline uh, and we also have experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm dealing as, you know, uh, from a financial advisory standpoint of people who need to close a business, mm -hmm. people who've sold a business, and now what do they do with their assets and how do they live? And, you know, I think today, especially with the interest rates being what they are, if you have a lump sum, what you could generate in passive income today mm -hmm. is far different than what it was 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think that's part of what we bring to bear is when you're thinking about that valuation, how do you convert that lump sum or that dollar amount into income? Mm -hmm. And what's realistic today? Because that number has def definitely changed. And John, you want to see people kind of in the beginning stages too, right? So you can help them decide how, where they need to get to. Absolutely. Right? And, and, you know, what, one of the things that mm -hmm. uh, is retirement planning, and, and this is not just you retiring, this is having a retirement plan as part of your business. Mm -hmm. and, and most small business people that I talk to, they view the entity as that retirement plan. And, and that's a little bit concerning to a certain degree because they're going to sell the business. My kids are going to take it over and I'll take income from it, all of that. And I think it's really important to understand that if you uh, set up a retirement plan, you're diversifying some of your resources. You're also creating a protection because very often those assets next to your residential home are your next best thing from a protected asset. It also is a way of demonstrating the financial soundness of your company. Uh, some of the, I mean, obvious uh, benefits of uh, setting up a retirement plan, is if we go to the, oh, maybe I could hit the uh, button here. Sorry. Your employer contributions are tax deductible. Assets in the plan grow tax-free and you have flexible plan options uh, depending upon your size and what you're looking to do. Um, 
there's a lot of different options that are out there. And uh, it's really important that uh, you explore this. And a lot of times people think, oh, you know what, I'll eventually get to that. Mm -hmm. And I'll eventually get to that. And I'll eventually get to that. Or they wait until they have a large tax bill and they're like, oh, I need to do something now. And, you know, this is one of these things that if you plan ahead of time, uh, you can really understand the benefits of it. And in most cases, you have to almost look at it from an employee's point of view. Hmm. They don't have this living entity of a business that the value of it means something to you. To them, it's a job. And one of the ways that you can create that relationship and value in it is by setting up a retirement plan. Um, can attract and retain employees. And, uh, you know, I, I think that is absolutely critical because today it's very difficult uh, to compete mm -hmm. when you're when you're trying to retain employees. And uh, I think it's, you know, probably not the first question. They, they generally want to know how much they're going to make. Yeah. They want to know what the conditions are now because that, that matters. But it's third or fourth on the list of things that people would ask. So my old company is freelancers. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's in your situation, it's not the same in yeah. terms of that, but it, you'd be amazed with, uh, you know, even yourself, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, efficient means of taxing your income, uh, things like that. Uh, obviously, it, it reduces current taxable income. Uh, it's not taxed until you distribute it. It's easy. Uh, the majority of plans out there have various degrees of payroll integration today. So a lot of the bookkeeping that was uh, concerning for somebody has been taken off their plate and, you know, uh, gaining compounding interest over time. I started actually uh, about 30 years ago in the retirement business. And at that time I was working for a major uh, retirement plan company up in Hartford that uh, is no longer in the business, but they offered if, if you did not make a decision on an investment, the default account was a 6% guaranteed account. Well, that tells you how long ago it was. It was, yeah. Yeah, so things have changed today. So a savings account today is anywhere from five to one basis points. And so cash uh, is not keeping up with this most recent inflation in the 7% range. So compounding interest over time is one of the most important aspects of a employee benefit plan. And you can transfer, you know, uh, you, you're not locked in to the individual uh, location, you could transfer to another employer. So, and it really, I, I think this is the thing that I emphasize more as an advisor, sitting with people when they come in and they're a couple of years away from retirement, and we have to explain to them what Social Security is going to pay them and uh, understanding those things. And, you know, this is an uh, integral part of a small business's plan is what is its value? Mm -hmm. And so if you have a healthy retirement uh, plan established, it gives you greater flexibility in terms of the terms that you're going to look at that. And I think that's the thing is that when you sell or transition out of a business, you want it to be on your terms. Right. And I, you know, and, and in the last two years, there are definitely people who question whether they should still be doing what they're doing. And so, as, as Tito said, we see people, you know, are really questioning staying in business. So, so common retirement plans, there's the, uh, the SEP plan, a simple retirement plan, a 401k plan. All of these require that you make regular contributions. Uh, it's something that you absolutely should get professional advice. Uh, it's incredibly important because if you're selling, closing, or retiring a business, being organized, prepared, and ready to deal with it, I think is absolutely critical. So you need to be prepared for selling it or closing it. Uh, and you should start making plans as soon as possible. Create a retirement plan for you and your employees, if you have employees, but maybe for just yourself. All right. What we learned about, reasons for selling a business and closing a business. And I would say closing the business is probably one of the tougher things because you do tend to invest a lot of emotional time and effort into a business. And, uh, but it's one of those things that you, you kind of need to understand when enough is enough. 
And it's tough because times do change. Uh, as we discussed, we went over the steps for selling or closing a business, uh, steps for succession planning, and benefits and steps for creating a retirement plan. Mm -hmm. And okay, so hopefully you found mm -hmm. this helpful. Mm -hmm. You're there. It definitely triggered, there. you know, possibly some questions. As Maria said, we will be sending out uh, this questionnaire. So it's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. You can take a look at it. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you know, please give us a call, reach out to us. Because as I said, we. Uh, Oh, any final questions? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's something that we'd be more than happy to assist you with. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's, you know, part of being uh, a member of Chelsea Groton mm -hmm. is that uh, our community is, yeah. is our customers. And yeah. being able to help them and make sure that they make the right decisions mm -hmm. uh, is, is absolutely critical. One of the things that I think about is uh, the Berenstain Bears yeah. died, and both of them, and it was Stan and Jan Berenstain, and their sons uh, not only took it over, but now write a whole new line of books. Wow. That is a rare occurrence. Sure. Um, and I think sitting here today, I'm thinking, I don't even know if I've really talked to my kids about what they want any part of this. You know, they might be running for the hills on the whole sure. thing. Uh, it's not great thing. My husband, you know, my three kids do other stuff. Um, so, and, and trying to understand that at the moment I am the central asset. So how exactly they handle well, that? And, and that is always a very difficult conversation yeah. because, um, and, and as I said, I think the pandemic has kind of caused all of us to kind of look at where we are mm -hmm. and what we're doing and the value or valuing the time that we spend doing something. But I also will tell you that having those conversations are absolutely critical, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's just like preparing for probate. Most people don't prepare for probate. Most people need a immediate family member issue to occur. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I run this parallel in the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, the nightmares that occur, what Tito talked about with buy-sell agreements, our commercial lending department could give you story after story about how you know, well, it was underfunded because they wanted to save money or, or these various things, or they wish they had, had it organized and somebody dies and their spouse is now their partner. Right. And so, you know, it's, it's these type of things from a, uh, a business organization is, is absolutely critical and it can make a world of difference. Because one of the challenges I have is it's, a, it's an LLC. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of me and then it's it and then it's us. And sure. Then it's yeah. You and then it's her. I mean, you know, it's me. It's just me, me, me. Well, and, so the, it's just a little mushy. Well, yes. And, and uh, I, I didn't go in as great detail, but when you look at that organization, so you could have an LLC with multiple partners in it. Right. Right now, it's just. Yeah. Correct. That was but, last night's class. Yeah. So you have to oh, kind of. You, you have to I assess in terms it. of okay. what it is. It could be a corporation. As I said before, you can't just like shut down. Yeah. In most cases, it was registered with a state. So you need to make sure that they're aware that it no longer exists. Mm -hmm. Because more than likely, they're expecting some sort of revenue via taxes at some point in time. So, right. you know, there's there are various steps, which is why having attorneys and accountants involved, make sure that uh, when you do transition, close, all those things, when you close it, it's, you know, and move mm -hmm. on to the next step, you've done it correctly. Yeah, right. So, so do, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to type into chat or unmute and ask. John can answer any kind of financial services, investment retirement questions and Tito can answer any business valuation questions. Yeah. John, just while we're waiting there, I mean, everybody, uh, I know that I showed you the uh, principle, the one page valuation there. This is ultimately what we'd love to get there with you. So this is a folder that we put together working with business owners. This is something that they have all told us that they like doing, just having something physical where ultimately you can see right here, we want to, we want to see informal valuation, buy-sell agreement, and so just a checklist of everything that all business owners are doing across the country right now and you should be considering too, we have this binder put together for you. Ultimately, end of the day, we want your advisor to have one, we want you guys to have one. So that as things go on, things happen in life, like we all know that they do, you can pull out the booklet, give John a call, say, John, we, we need to review the buy-sell agreement, something happened. You both just pull this out. That's it. Don't need to go scrambling, looking for papers or anything like that. So filling this out, 
Next step is the binder. Mm -hmm. So excited to get these started with you guys. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Tito. Mm -hmm. All right. Are there any questions online? I do not have any questions in okay. chat. If, well, if you get help from somebody, are, are there charges obviously for that to get i mean for you guys to talk to, to talk to a bank officer that, that's, that's a great question so this is really it's a free value added service that we offer okay. and obviously through financial services uh we'd love to gain your business uh but this is something that we offer you know to customers of the bank okay. small business my, that's my business bank. Yeah, yeah no so i mean absolutely uh you know and and truly when you when you look at it from what it is and as tito talked about uh, it enables you to secure insurance based off of, you know, an evaluation off of that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think if you have this done, even before you meet with professionals, if you're thinking about succession planning, transferring, selling, all of those things, it gives you a value outside of your own. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's really kind of like the difficulty is, is because it's probably very, you know, a big part of what drives you and mm -hmm. the passion about I'm it. Sure, yeah. yeah, so it, it's difficult, but I think it's also important to understand, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I have to drop this on my kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you.